Uh, I want to turn now to the market action. We're joined by Brent Schutte, Chief Investment Strategist at Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management. Uh, Brent, haven't seen you in a while. Great to have you back here with us. Uh, so let's just start with this big news that we have coming out of the Hill. That is the infrastructure package. Right now, you know, markets pretty much continuing the action that we had seen earlier in the trading session. The Dow is is rallying right now, but only up just about half a percentage point. I think we've seen bigger pops previously on some infrastructure headlines. But just looking out ahead, do you think that this infrastructure package could perhaps be that catalyst to send the markets higher? We have seen some fresh record highs from the Dow today. Yeah, I think you actually did a very good job in the opening of painting a picture of how I'm going to answer this question. And so to me, no one should be buying or selling stocks based upon what they believe is going to happen with the reconciliation bill and things of that nature. Um, I think that longer term, what typically drives the US economy is what happens uh, in the economy. Uh, and I think the economy is really, really big uh, and has a natural trend of growth. And let's not forget that we have elections every couple of years. And so there's gonna be a lot of back and forth because we do have a midterm coming up on this bill. I think it eventually something happens, but it's much, much smaller. And the tax hikes are probably much less than what people are worried about right now. And so the bottom line to me is it doesn't necessarily, uh, it shouldn't cause you to dramatically change your allocation, but it does, as you referenced in the opening, change how you may think about investing, just from the standpoint of what type of stocks you wanna invest in. And I think that still leans towards things that are more cyclical in nature, um, rather than more secular growth like technology. It leads more to small caps, it leads more to value, it leads more to industrials, uh, and things that tend to do well when inflation is higher and economic growth is strong, which is likely to be the case for the next year or so. So let's talk about that economic growth and what you are picturing really for the economy moving forward. I, I'm just looking at the bond yields right now. They are in the green up almost 2%. But we have seen a lot of seesawing in the bond market lately. If you were to read the tea leaves really of what the bond market is telling us right now, what would you, uh, what are you picturing? Yeah, I mean, to me, if you think about the last year and a half, last 18 months, everything that we did was to get to where we were on June 30th or somewhere of that nature or somewhere around that time period, which is we were looking to get economic growth. Hopefully COVID cases would be going down. The market would rally and the economy would be strong. We got to that point in June and then people started worrying about what's next. And I think there are three camps of worries. One, the too much worry camp, which is that inflation is too high. The second one is that economic growth is peaking. Uh, and that has a COVID aspect to it, the Delta variant. And then last but not least is the stocks are too expensive camp. And I think all three of those camps saw people moving towards treasuries because that's still the hedge against almost everything that people have learned. I do think that as those worries each come off the boil, as you move towards the end of the year, I do think you will see treasury yields rise. And I do think you will see the economy continue to grow at a very fast pace, which will pull the market with us and push us to new highs. But again, back to my original comments, it will be in those things that do well when economic growth is strong, which we continue to see happening. And of course, we are supposed to get some CPI figures out tomorrow, a, a nice inflation indicator. We have seen some of those expectations uh, ticking upwards. Now, we've repeatedly heard from the Fed that inflation, inflationary pressures are transitory. And I think, and this is a question we asked before, but I think more folks are really getting louder about this question, which is how transitory really is transitory. And we've had some folks say, listen, the Fed right now is frankly getting it all wrong, or at least it isn't being as honest or as transparent perhaps about the durability right now, some of those upward inflationary pressures. How are you uh, seeing right now this inflation picture? Yeah, so I think this bout that we're having right now is more transitory. And so it is not odd when you come out of a recession to see actually inflation spike. This one's a bit different or maybe on steroids, I should say. I mean, you've actually had aggregate income actually go up in the economy during this time period because of the fiscal stimulus, because people saving money, they're all coming back out and looking to spend now. You have supply chains that are being disrupted still because of COVID, some companies shut down. And so I think we're out of equilibrium right now. I think that as you move towards the end of the year, that will start seeing inflation pull back. And indeed, if you look at more median measures of CPI, they're much, much more moderate. And so the more median measures actually take out these huge outliers that are being driven by the, the return, like autos and things of that nature. Autos and vehicles aren't gonna continue to rise at 10% per year. And so I think you'll have something more towards inflation pulling back. I also don't think you can have permanent inflation until you get rid of all the labor slack that we have. And we still have a lot of people to rehire. Um, and so this bout is transitory. 
sometime next year, I think you're going to start worrying about inflation again, just because the labor slack will have come down a bit. You'll see pay increases become a little bit more durable. And then I'm going to allow everybody to start worrying about inflation being more permanent. But I think towards the end of the year, I think it pulls back. And I think that's the impetus for markets moving higher. I do want to ask you, because you talked a little bit about where you see at least uh, opportunity right now, where you think uh, we can see some some good performance coming out ahead. But we have seen a bit of volatility in the markets lately, especially as we've had some of these concerns around the Delta variant. Lockdowns in China, for example, really sent energy prices uh, sliding yesterday. Where right now do you think is some of the best protection against some of these downside risks, especially as so many folks say we can and should anticipate a bit of volatility into the fall. Yeah, I, I mean, I think on the Delta variant, I mean, think about where we were last year in March and April. Think about all the uncertainty that we had and how we had to shut down the entire economy um, kind of as a result of that. Think about how we adapted over the next year. Think about and contrast that to today. Um, certainly the monetary and fiscal policy that we needed then is still in place. Um, from an adaptation, the economy has adapted around it. Um, you know, it was essentially a whole economy thing, and then it became concentrated in a smaller part of the economy. Uh, and last but not least, we still have vaccines that are effective. Um, and certainly science isn't starting from where they were back uh, in March and April of last year, where people were questioning, would we get a vaccine in three to five years when the time horizon sped up? And so I, I do think that Delta can be a headwind, uh, but I don't think it's going to keep the market down for a longer period of time, just given that the uncertainty level of today is much less than uh, before. I would tie that in with the cross currents that you've mentioned. So the market has been somewhat trendless and we've had this push and pull between value versus growth, large versus small. That's a difference than it was last year where stocks up or stocks down. Um, and so I do think that as you move towards the end of the year, I think as those worries kind of pull back, I think you're gonna see those things do well. I guess on the hedging side, I mean, to me, um, a portfolio is made up of a bunch of different asset classes uh, and bond yields are low right now, but you should own those to hedge against some of those risks. And on the inflation side, I think you need to own commodities and things of that nature uh, as a, a kind of a, a what if could occur. Um, but all in all, the favorite asset class or the one that we're still tilted more towards based upon our outlook as equities. And the one inflation hedge I did not hear you mention, Brent, is cryptocurrency, or specifically Bitcoin. We've heard a lot of folks talk about that one. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. I don't know what moves Bitcoin. And certainly during the period where inflation expectations were rising and the market was worried about that, that's not so coincident. That's kind of awkwardly the, the period of time where Bitcoin fell by, what, 30 to 50 percent. And now those have kind of backed off. Inflation concerns have come down. I know you're hearing more about it in the media, but in the market, inflation concerns have pulled back. Uh, and so I'm not for sure that Bitcoin has kind of followed an inflation expectation uh, framework that people <laughs> pretend it to be. All right. We're going to leave that there. Brent Schutte, Chief Investment Strategist at Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management. Always great to have you here with us.